This tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hi folks, today I'm going to talk about this section here and I basically give you a taste of how these things work by using this I can hear this command and this command. They look slightly different. I remember this one looks different in other versions of Maya. We're currently in 2019 slash 2020. And um, I think they changed something about this stamp, but basically it is a stamp. For sculpting, all the orange colored things work with a polygon world. They do not work with the curved uh, surfaces like here. This is the blue section. We do have sculpting tools for this too, but uh, this is uh, about polygon sculpting. And uh, when you start sculpting, when you even think about sculpting, you need to have high density of polygon meshes. And uh, sorry about this, but the easiest thing is this plane here, which we can make a little bit bigger here like this and we need lots of subdivisions. When you move the slider all the way to the right you get 50 by 50 but we want more. We want 100 at least. Maybe 100 here. So this is quite a high density but um, maybe not enough. You can go much higher if you like until Maya crashes because the resolution is so high. Actually let me do this 150 still no complaints here. If you go further up uh, you get a complaint and Maya says do you really want to continue because this is <laughs> going to be very heavy for uh, on the CPU. Okay this is a polygon plane here and now we go to sculpting. You find all these things under modeling and somewhere here. Search for them. I use the icons. The first one I'm going to use is this one and then this one. Okay when you hover the mouse over it you see lift a surface at the bottom left. Lift a surface. Okay, we're going to lift this surface here. Actually, what is crucial here is, can you see these little lines here? When you start this tool, I would recommend, I undo this, to um, just move out quite a bit until you see this circle. The circle is only visible when the mouse hovers over the geometry. It's not visible now, but now it is. And probably when you start it, it's so big that you don't see it. So move further out and hover the mouse over your object. And then press and hold the key B for brush. And while you hold B, use the mouse button, I think it's the left one, in order to make this smaller in most cases smaller. Now we can go closer and we see this size here. Press and hold B in order to make it smaller or bigger. So we're in this tool now and this is what happens. There's a very simple stroke. Actually it's uh, touch sensitive so when I do the stroke with a pen I can start smoothly and make it run out smoothly. This is quite a different now I'm pressing really hard so here it's absolutely wonderful to use a pen, a graphics tablet. With a mouse you can only have one pressure here and when you double click this you see the settings here and the strength for example for the mouse is here. When you reduce this and now I'm uh, working with a mouse press B and make it a little bit smaller so you see the difference here. Okay so this is what I'm doing with the mouse now. Here you have other options like invert. They are all the same with all the tools really. You can invert, you can uh, paint in certain directions, X, Y, etc. Symmetry on and off. Now make the brush bigger with a key B. Now I'm moving the whole thing down, which is a subtle effect here because I have such a big brush now make the brush smaller of course like this now things go down okay so this is one of the several tools about a dozen 
which you have here. This one does lift a surface. So let me undo all this. Now I'm back to the original and now I use the stamp. When you hover the mouse over here on the bottom left you see imprint a single copy of a stamp on a surface. That's exactly what we want to do. So I use this and now uh, I double click it because here it's crucial to have a stamp selected. All the values here, invert is still on because I did the inversion here. Now I can take it off, reset the tool, whatever. And um, here I can pick the stamp. And the default stamp is this pattern here. So I have a very, very large pen as you can see. So press and hold B and scale it down. And now let's have a look at the stamp and how the stamp works. I use the graphics pen again. The stamp only works with a single sort of click, uh, but by pressing and holding you position and rotate that stamp. So this is a picture, obviously, and you can position it on your geometry, and what it does is it elevates certain parts. Pretty drastic, as you can see. And this again is this value here. If you reduce this to 1, now I'm back to the mouse, and this is still positioning it. And when I release the mouse, I get this pattern now. This is ideal if you want to create a, a street which is a little bit more irregular, for example, or the wall of a house or an old castle. It's very simple. I just did it with one click. Let me undo this again. And what I'll do now is I'm at the in the menu of the submenu of the stamp here and I import the stamp. And here I have the Uhr icon. This is the icon of my channel. Uhr is German for, means clock, nothing else really. Now I have this stamp here. I'm using the stamp so it's ticked on and now I can just I'm pressing and holding the mouse and now I release the mouse and then I have this pattern here. And that's all I wanted to show you. Have a nice day and bye bye. Whatever dull or stupid thing you do in Maya when you apply a texture like this skin texture here, Arnold's skin, <laughs> it turns out to be really nice. And you don't have to render things upside down, downside up. You can just rotate it just like you want. And this is being rendered by the graphics card with a lot of grain, but you can increase the rendering time and have less grain. But I like this grain here. End of this talk.